And as soon as it boomed, all the lights flashed, and then we just like, just like grabbed each other. <laughs> oh, I bet. Talk about a rude awakening. Thunder and lightning rumbles and lights up the sky across the valley. And people in Florida are bracing for powerful rain and wind as Hurricane Dorian threatens the state. This is KGW News at Noon. And we start with an earthquake off the Oregon coast. The U.S. Geological Survey says a 6.3 quake struck about 170 miles off the coast of Bandon. This map shows the epicenter. Officials say there is no tsunami threat. People in Portland reported feeling this quake. For instance, Erin says her office at the University of Portland was shaking. Another woman in the Goose Hollow area said she also felt it. Joe Ranieri is following this story for us. He'll have more coverage coming up on the news at four. That earthquake wasn't the only thing people felt this morning. They reported thunder and lightning all across the Willamette Valley. Lightning hit a sequoia tree, sending splinters and big pieces of wood flying. The storm damaged two homes in Oak Grove and left a neighborhood rattled. KGW's Christine Pitawanich was there all morning talking to neighbors. People in this Oak Grove neighborhood had a scary and eventful morning when lightning hit that sequoia tree. It is huge. It exploded, sending splinters and debris everywhere. Fortunately, everyone is okay. The woman who lives in this home near Southeast Raymond Street and Harold Ave says she was watching the storm from her window around 3 a.m. when she realized it was close. She hoped the lightning wouldn't hit the two sequoias right next to her home, but it hit one of them, and when it did, she says it sounded like a bomb went off. Her neighbors described the same thing. And then the big boom hit and it just shook the whole house and everything, power went out. It was scary. When you hear a loud explosion like that, the first thing you think is everybody okay. The homeowner we spoke to says she has a whole lot of cleanup to do today. She's got a hole in her roof right above her bedroom and she says her neighbor has roof damage too. But the big thing here is that everyone is okay. I've never heard it that loud. Like, I've been in concerts and everything, but I've never heard anything that loud. Out here on the street in front of the home, splinters are all over as well. People living here also had to deal with a power outage. And Gladstone firefighters tell me that in this area, there were a couple of residential fires they believe might have also been caused by lightning. Here in Oak Grove, Christine Pitawanich, KGW News. Yeah, that's proof how destructive lightning can be, but it's also pretty stunning to watch. We want to show you this time lapse from our Rose City Skycam over downtown Portland. You can see the flashes of pink and white light in the distance during the morning commute. A lot of you are sharing your photos and videos with us. For instance, Melanie took this amazing picture of a lightning strike over some trees. And Wendy shared this video of lightning in her neighborhood this morning. So please keep your photos and your vid videos coming. You can send them by using the hashtag KGWweather. All right, meteorologist Rod Hill is standing by, and the big question everybody wants to know is, is this stormy weather over? And the simple answer, Brenda, is it depends on where you are. So let me show you radar right now across our entire state. So it was pretty quiet earlier this morning, but if you look out east, now we have thunder and lightning moving into parts of Baker County. There is a storm in, uh, what, the uh, eastern section of Jefferson County. And then I'll turn the Doppler radar on this other monitor to zero in on what's going on down in Marion County. So right now, I think the answer is it's looking very unlikely that we'll see another big cluster of storms here on the west side of our state. What's out to sea producing thunder is going to move up to our north. This batch of thunderstorms in uh, Marion County right now, here's Salem's, this is well off to your east, is starting to track and it's going to pull up the Cascade Range. But if you have plans to get into the mountains uh, this afternoon, that storm threat is certainly real and ongoing. Here in Portland, we're getting partly cloudy skies. Now remember, when you're unstable, and you get some sunshine that in fact starts to fuel the possibility of the stormy clouds redeveloping. So the storm chance continues in our forecast all the way into at least early this evening before it fizzles out. That doesn't mean it's going to be stormy where you are. We're at 73 right now, 80 at lunchtime. Most of us will be dry and partly cloudy, but there could be some developing lightning and then pretty much a storm threat over by mid evening period 
and 74 degrees. It was quite a show early this morning, no doubt about that. Hey, Brenda, I've made some changes to the uh, seven day forecast as we get into Labor Day weekend. That's coming up. All right, got to talk about the holiday. Thank you, Rod. And remember, you can keep up to date on the weather conditions on our website or with our KGW weather app. We're also following some national and international headlines. First nationally, Florida's governor has now declared a state of emergency as Hurricane Dorian barrels toward the coast. Residents in Jacksonville are filling sandbags and they're stocking up on food and water. Dorian is currently a category one hurricane, but the National Hurricane Center warns it could strengthen to a cat four, packing winds up to 130 miles an hour. The storm is forecast to make landfall on Monday. It swept across the British and Virgin Islands yesterday. The Department of Justice says it will not prosecute former FBI Director James Comey for allegedly leaking memos about private conversations with President Trump. The Inspector General's office released a report this morning. It says Comey violated FBI policies by keeping copies of his memos in a personal safe. The report also says Comey gave a memo containing unclassified information to a friend and then asked that friend to share it with the media. However, Comey is denying that. He responded on Twitter saying the DOJ found no evidence that he released the memo. Today, federal health officials are echoing their long-standing warning about the dangers of marijuana. At a press conference, the Surgeon General said no amount of weed is safe for pregnant women or teenagers developing brains. According to the CDC, about 38% of high schoolers report using pot at some point. A fire destroyed this fourplex in Beaverton, leaving 11 people without a place to live. This happened off Southwest 17th Street. Tualatin Valley Fire and Rescue says it doesn't think anyone was hurt in the fire, but the building, right now at least, is unstable, so crews are not able to safely search inside. The Red Cross is helping the affected families. We don't know yet how the fire started. Portland police say they're looking for two people involved in a carjacking, a kidnapping, and a shooting. This started at the Barber Transit Center in southwest Portland yesterday afternoon, and it ended across town at Mount Tabor Park. Police say the suspect carjacked a man at the transit center, then tied him up and drove him to Mount Tabor Park. We spoke with the victim off camera. He says his hands were zip tied and his face was covered. He says he did not know the suspects. The shooting happened in the Mount Tabor neighborhood and police say two people noticed the victim tied up and tried to ask what was going on. The suspect shot at them, but no one was hurt. The victim got away and the suspects took off with his car. It's a black 2007 BMW 525 with Oregon license plate 001 DDR. If you see it, give Portland police a call. In Washington County, deputies need your help to find a man accused of attacking a teenage girl. She was walking home near 185th and Rock Creek Boulevard early yesterday morning. Deputies say the man approached her from behind, tried to talk to her, then grabbed her backpack and covered her mouth. According to deputies, the teen bit the man's hand and he ran, to what, and he ran away. Deputies describe him as Hispanic in his 20s, about 5'10", with a thin mustache. It's there has been a tragic death in the racing world, and it happened right here in Oregon. Jessie Combs, known as the fastest woman on four wheels, died trying to break a land speed record in her jet car. This happened yesterday afternoon in Harney County's Alvord Desert in southeastern Oregon. KGW's Katherine Cook talked to a racer who knew Combs. It shows that there's a huge turning point in our sport that, you know, women are now becoming accepted, that there's times are changing. And in that world of land speed racing, Jesse Combs was the pilot, both literally and figuratively. On Tuesday, the 39-year-old race car driver and former TV co-host was in southeastern Oregon's Alvord Desert. She was driving her famed North American Eagle, a 56-foot-long jet-powered car. Her goal? topping the current women's land speed record of 512.7 miles an hour. This video from the KGW archives is from 1976, when Kitty O'Neill set the record in the Alvor Desert. Combs died there, trying to break it. She was an inspiration to young girls. 
So we know going into it that we could die. Ron Hughley is curator for the World of Speed Motorsports Museum in Wilsonville. Combs' death hit him hard. Cars are my life, so when I'm not here, I'm racing. He's also a crew chief for the Target 550, a streamliner designed to go 500 miles an hour based in Aurora. Valerie Thompson pilots the Target 550 and new Combs, two women piloting through rare air on the ground. It breaks my heart, you know. Yeah. She's such an inspirational person and, you know, her messages and her and her ways about her is just incredible. About five years ago, Thompson, who lives in Arizona, says she had an opportunity to pilot the North American Eagle before going in a different direction. She remembers sitting in its driver's seat. I turned on the afterburners. It's, it's, it's so amazing. It's, it's incredible. That horsepower is just wonderful, you know. That's one thing, but the safety too is another thing. Thompson says she had concerns about the North American Eagle's safety. She wonders what if it had been her. It's painful. Yeah. All we can do is do better and, you know, pay it forward. The Harney County Sheriff's Office is still investigating what caused the crash that killed Combs. Hughley says even when the investigation is over, he's confident their sport will go on. It's what drives them. We are the modern day adventurers. So we'll continue to do it, you know, because there's always a record to be broken. Catherine Cook, KGW News. A Central Oregon mom is suing her dental office, saying she was forced to leave because she was breastfeeding. Her name is Kaylee Kello. She says it happened at Willamette Dental Group in Bend. She says she was nursing her 16-month-old son while her 5-year-old was waiting to have a tooth pulled. She says the dentist walked in and then quickly left. She was then told he wouldn't perform the extraction if she continued to breastfeed. Kello was eventually escorted out of the building. I feel like breastfeeding is arguably one of the most natural things a mother can do. Um, and, you know, us moms have enough anxiety. We have enough anxiety going out with our toddlers <laughs> anywhere. Um, so the fact that we have to worry about if we're going to be able to feed them um, without dirty looks, without shame, without, you know, all the negative connotations that really come with it. Um, it's really just mind boggling to me that we even deal with this at this day and age. Willamette Dental declined to comment on her lawsuit. Oregon law does give women the right to breastfeed in a public place. Well, we have been talking about our KGW school supply drive all month long. Thank you to everybody who's donated. Today is the last day of the drive and Drew Carney is hard at work counting all your gifts. Great sign for the school supply drive, Brenda. We have lots of number two pencils in our studio today. We also have the number one pencil, Pencil Pete from Schoolhouse Supplies. So we call this the parade of supplies. All of your donations coming to our studio so we can distribute them to local kids before the school year begins. We'll have the full numbers on how successful this year's drive was coming up in just a moment.